In this video, I'm going to show you a very simple agent uh, that I built using Google's uh, agent development kit. And we're going to connect a few custom tools to that agent. So the agent knows how to do something useful. Number two, we're going to connect an MCP server to the agent. So the agent can get some of that uh, functionality as well through MCP. And number three, we're going to instrument all of the code. So we have full observability on everything the agent does, uh, the costs, the time it takes to run all of the prompts uh, through the agent, everything. To get this working, I'm going to share the source code. It's gonna, there's going to be a link somewhere. It's a very simple source code. But to get this working, I'm using UV. And I'm using a couple of uh, libraries, Python libraries that you have to install. The first one is the Google Agent Development Kit. Okay, so this is the Google ADK. And the second one is OPIC. OPIC is the library that is going to give us observability into everything the agent is doing. And I cannot emphasize enough how important that is for troubleshooting um, to have full visibility into everything that's happening. All right, so after I install all of that, you're gonna notice that I have a folder here, which is called MCP agent. That folder contains the code of my agent. And it's very simple. There is an environment file with a few environment variables. I'm not gonna open the file here. In fact, I'm gonna close it because all of my uh, API keys are there. But in the readme file, I'm going to write the API keys that you need to find in order to run this specific agent, OK? Then I have an init file. And this init file just imports uh, the agent here that makes this import. This is something that this is the way the Google SDK or ADK runs. And then I have the agent file that contains my code. And this code is based on one of the examples that the Google ADK provides. I added just some modifications to make it better for this video, but it's about it. It's, it's very simple. So I want my agent to be able to do three things. I want an agent that can return the weather of a city. So I ask, hey, I want the weather for this city, and it should tell me what the weather looks like. I want that agent to return the time on that city. And I want an agent to give me directions from one city to another city, driving directions. Those are the three things I want my agent to do. So obviously, I need to find tools that do those three things, because an LLM by itself is not able to do any of that. I think like the, maybe the driving directions will be able to do that based on training data. But other than that, it's not going to be able to help much. So. I created here, I have here two functions that are going to serve as custom tools, OK? And obviously, the code of these get weather and get current time functions, that code is not helpful. Like, it's, it's just for testing purposes here. Imagine that I'm actually connecting to an API, and that API is returning the weather for the cities, OK? Or the time for the city. Here, I'm not doing that. What I'm doing inside get weather is I have a fixed set of cities that I support. Like I have New York, London, and Tokyo. And here I'm just returning just a fixed weather. And this is just, again, for testing purposes. So if you ask about New York, you will always get that is sunny with a temperature of 45 Fahrenheit. If you ask about London, you get uh, 55 and cloudy. And if you ask about Tokyo, you get light rain and 72. OK, so that is just fixed. Uh, notice that the function, the only thing that the function does is it takes the city name, it normalizes it, and it just returns from this array. That's it. It's just very simple. The get current time function is very, very similar as well. So I grab the uh, time zone from this constant array or dictionary that I have here. And based on that time zone, I return what the time must be, right? Depending on the time zone where that city is and my local computer's time. Very simple. It's only supported 
uh, for these three cities because I fixed it. Everything else is just gonna say, I don't have time zone information for that city. So these are the two tools, the two, I'm gonna call them custom tools that I want my model to have access to my agent. My agent is gonna be connected with these two tools. But we also want to connect this agent to a tool that will give me driving directions, okay? From one place to, one, to the other. And that tool will be the official Google MCP server. They, the Google Maps MCP server, they support driving directions. That's what we're gonna use. So let's create the agent here because we're almost at the end of this file. It's not that big of a deal and you'll see how easy it is, okay? So here I have my agent and I'm using the LLM agent class from the Google ADK, okay? So uh, for this agent, I need to specify a name and you can just pick any name. I'm using this constant here, which are defined on top here, the agent model and the agent name. The name is weather time city agent. You can use whatever name you want. And the model that I'm going to be using is the Gemini 2.0 flash model. Again, you can use whatever model you want to use. So that's the name of the agent and that's the model of that the agent will be using, the LLM agent. Now, this is the description of the agent. Agent to answer questions about the time and weather in a city and provide directions between two cities. That's it. Here are the instructions, okay? Now, notice the instructions, I'm saying you're a helpful assistant. When the user asks for a specific city, use the get weather and the get current time tools to find the weather and the current time information. If the tools return an error, inform the user. If the tools are successful, present the report clearly. That is my instructions prompt for that agent. You can fiddle it, I fiddle with it, you can modify it. In my experience, most of the time of building an agent will go towards improving the prompt so the agent knows exactly what to do. Notice that I'm not even telling the agent to use the Google Maps MCP server. The agent is able to do that without me specifying that, uh, just to give you an idea how cool these things are. So anyway, here I'm going to specify the tools for this agent. And notice that I have an array of tools. So I'm passing three tools here. The first one is get weather, which is the function that I just defined. Get current time is the second function. And then I'm using the MCP tool set here. And this is where the fun part begins, right? So I want to connect to an MCP server that is going up through the STDIO protocol, which is the standard input and output protocol, meaning this MCP server is just gonna be running here locally. I'm not connecting to an HTTP location. I'm connecting to an MCP server that's gonna be running here locally. And I'm specifying this is the command that you have to run, NPX. And these are the arguments that you have to pass to that NPX command. And notice that I'm passing model context protocol slash server Google Maps. So that's the MCP server that will give me access to driving directions, okay? And I'm passing the environment variable. This MCP server requires an API key for Google Maps. So you have to create that API key on your cloud uh, website, on the Google Cloud website. I'm passing my Google Maps API key that's coming from one of the environment variables that I have defined in my .em file. After that, all of these are different callbacks. And I'm using OPIC here to do the entire observability or to set up the entire observability of this process. And you'll see how cool that is when I run this agent. But basically I want OPIC to listen to before the agent runs, after the agent runs, before the model runs, after the model runs. So you have all of these callbacks and I'm using the OPIC tracer to sort of like intersect that callback, do my thing or OPIC will do its thing and then, you know, move on. And this line here, I can just remove. I don't need it anymore. That's it. This is my entire definition of an agent. In summary, I have a, a couple of tools 
imagine that those tools uh, might be APIs that you're calling or they're coming from separate library, whatever that is, that's fine. I can connect those tools to my agent. And I can also connect my agent to one or more MCP servers. In this case, I'm connecting to Google Maps. I could also connect to another MCP server to do, I don't know, send Gmail messages or whatever uh, you want. After this, I can just go and run my uh, agent. And to do that, I'm going to be using, I'm using UV here. So I can do UV run ADK. And ADK is the command that is going to get installed when you install the UV project or the Google ADK library. So I'm going to do this. And this here, the AD, oh, I'm sorry. Did I make a mistake? Oh, it's uh, ADK and I need to pass web to it because there are multiple ways to run the ADK. All right, so I'm going to be running it with the fast API server. So I'm going to be doing UV run ADK web. I'm going to run that. And this is going to open. Uh, it's going to have, it's going to be running on localhost for 80,000. So I'm going to open this. And here I have a session. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Here I have an interface where I can interact with my agent. So let's see if that is true. I'm going to ask a question. What's the weather in New York? OK, so I'm going to ask this. The agent will go. You can see here the events that are happening. And the answer is the weather in New York is sunny with a temperature of 45 Fahrenheit. Uh, that is, if I remember correctly, exactly. Let me just hide this. The weather in New York is sunny with a temperature of 45 Fahrenheit. So definitely the get weather function got called. You can see it here, how it's been called. Let me open now OPIC and you can see in OPIC, in OPIC you have multiple projects. I'm tracking everything under a project called Google Agent SDK. And you can see this was the call that we just made. Notice that it says, what's the weather in New York? And if I open this call, you can see it took 2.1 seconds to answer, 797 tokens, and less than 0 0.001 cent. Okay, so that was the estimated cost of running this particular call. You can see here that it, the get weather tool, and you see the symbol of a tool, was the one that got called. Um, the status, the return of that tool was success, and the report was the weather, I mean, the the answer, the actual report, weather report was the weather in New York is sunny with a temperature of 45 Fahrenheit. And then we got back to Gemini Flash. And here you can see the entire conversation with Gemini Fly, with Gemini Flash. Everything that went in, everything that came out of Gemini Flash, you are going to get it here. And this is very very, very cool and very powerful whenever you want to troubleshoot stuff. So let's give, uh, let's try something different. Uh, so we already asked for the weather. Let's ask for what's the time in London? So it should use the get current time function. That's also a custom function. And the current time in London is 1438. If I look at my time, yeah, that. Sounds about right. I'm not in London right now. <laughs> I can do the math. So let's look at OPIC here. And we should have an, a new line item. What's the time in London? Same deal. You can see everything that's going on. What goes into what? You know, what is the input? What is the output? Like notice, for example, the first call to Gemini, uh, the input was the query. And the output was, please call the function get current time, okay? That's the output here. Gemini is telling the agent, can you please call this function in order for me to return what it is? So the agent called the function, that was the result of the function, and then that result went back into uh, Gemini, and then Gemini came up with the final response. The final response was the current time in London is 14.38. Pretty cool. Let's do something now more difficult which is uh, I want driving directions. If I can type between Miami 
and Tampa. And now let's see what the agent does. Look at this. The agent is calling the maps directions, uh, which is a function of the MCP server. And here are the driving directions that came back from the model. So you can see, hey, head west and southeast, 13th towards Brickell Avenue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's look at comment here. We open this and you get the maps direction here. Uh, actually, let me just go back to the function. Look at this. So when we ask the model to do this, the answer back from the model was please call the function called maps directions, okay? The function got called. This function took 0.5 seconds to return. And here are, this is the output, this is the text. All of the routes that you have to take for the model to uh, interpret. And now we sent all of that output to the model and the model came back 2.8 seconds took with 3000 tokens and the model came back with the actual driving directions. Okay, that is pretty cool. Now I'm gonna ask something else completely unrelated to this model. And because this agent is only capable of doing these things, the agent is probably going to refuse. So I'm gonna ask, I don't know, who is the president of France? Let's see what happens. I'm sorry, I cannot fulfill this request. The available tools lack the desired functionality. So this agent is pretty locked down. It's only capable of doing what I'm asking it to do. So that's pretty cool. So again, super easy to set up. I'm gonna leave a, a little bit of a description on the readme file and a link in my GitHub repo, but it's super easy to build your first agent and connect it to MCP, servers or custom tools that you create. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.